A brace is indicated by the prefix B before the number. The difference between a Paratech strut and a brace is the struts are designed to be used in compression. Braces are designed to be used in tension. So the collar of the brace is permanently attached to the tube. To adjust the brace you spin out the piston, the collar does not move. Here we have six extensions, two 235s which are 24 inch or 2 foot extensions, two 435s which are 4 foot extensions, and two 635s. The 6 indicates the length and feet of the extension and the 35 stands for 3.5 inches in diameter. The gold struts are 3.5 inches in diameter and gray struts are 3 inches in diameter. Here we are measuring to our insertion point. The insertion point is the point of damage that we are trying to capture with the raker system. So at this point he's going to take the measurement and relays this measurement to logistics. They will assemble the raker based on this measurement. After taking the insertion point measurement to the raker table on the raker rail, they will decide then if a 45 degree or 60 degree raker will be erected. In this case they will build a 60 degree raker. They choose the lower raker table on the rail and slide their finger along the second column until they find the insertion point measurement of 10 feet. Now they slide their finger to the left column. That will give them their raker length. In this case, a 10 foot insertion point will give them a raker length of 12 feet. Here are the five components you will need to assemble one portion of the raker without putting in the bracing. Here is a 610 strut. To the right is a 435 extension. A 610 strut is 6 feet collapsed and can extend out 4 feet to a total of 10 feet. The 435 extension is 4 feet long. We will take a 610 strut, add a 435 extension that will give us 10 feet. Then we will extend the strut piston by 2 feet and lock it. Then we have our wall plate, raker latch base and ground pad. So at this point they will bring the strut down to the extension and set it down. Remember, yellow tape to yellow tape assures that the extension goes on the correct end of the strut, the non-movable end. Now assemble the two pieces. Pull up the lock pin, set it, and let the lock pin go. The assembly is locked together. Here we see one end of the latch base is solid and one end is movable and spring-loaded. The solid end goes in first, and then the spring-loaded end. Once the latch base is locked in place, turn the raker rail on its side. Attach the strut to the wall plate via the latch base. Next attach the wall plate to the raker. Notice the yellow tape. The yellow tape always goes towards the wall. Now attach the two pieces. Move to the bottom and attach the base plate. Remember, the length of the raker has to be 12 feet. They have a 6 foot strut with a 435 that is 10 feet. Extend it approximately 2 feet. We don't have to measure because it is adjustable by spinning the lock nut. Take the base plate with the D-ring and assemble it to the bottom of the raker strut making sure the D-ring faces outwards away from the wall. Now assemble the bracing. Use a B23. The B indicates it is a brace. For a 60 degree raker leave three open holes on the wall plate. Attach the raker latch base to the fourth hole. Remember yellow tape goes to the wall. Take the brace with the yellow tape and attach to the wall plate. Attach the clamp and clevis to the movable end of the B23 brace. Let this hang and attach to the raker strut. Move the assembly with the brace not attached over to the wall. Slide the top end up the wall until you reach the 10 foot insertion point. At the 10 foot insertion point, the man at the bottom will adjust the lock nut on the strut standing on the ground pad footing it. Footing it will hold the raker in place while the brace is adjusted and attached to the raker strut. Now attach the brace to the raker length. Bring the B23 up and make a 90 degree angle. If it is not exactly 90 degrees, spin out the piston to make the clamp tight so the gap in the back is filled. When tightening the butterfly nut on the clamp and clevis make sure the washer is on top of the clamp. Turn down the butterfly screw hand tight. Make sure there is a 90 degree angle between the wall plate and the brace. 
Remember, the wall plate must be pinned to the wall in two places to prevent the raker system from sliding up the wall. There are half inch holes in the face of the wall plate to facilitate this. Since this is a block wall, we can use devices designed for this like Hilti anchor bolts or concrete screws. Using two bolts or pins will prevent the raker system from twisting. Put one down low on the wall plate. If they go up higher, put in a second one. Now that we have a raker attached to the wall and the angle is correct, pin the base plate to the ground. Pinning it to the wall will prevent the raker from sliding up the wall if the building starts to move. Pinning it to the ground will keep it from sliding away from the wall on the ground. Pin it with two pickets, which is normally the way we start. We can always add a whaler system to the back later. If a wooden raker is assembled next to this system, it can be braced to the ground using a whaler. This flexibility is designed in the system. We always place our pickets in the second hole from the back. That way, if a wooden whaler is used afterwards and added a wooden raker, they can slide in the angle brace and fit it right around the picket. Now slide in the whaler against it. That way the base plate cannot kick out under the whaler. Now a wooden raker can be built. Use wooden wedges between the wood raker and the whaler system to pressurize the raker to the wall. The Paratech system can be taken down and moved down the wall to another location. The second assembled raker is set up at 6 foot on center. Because we're placing wood rakers on either side and want them to be 8 foot on center. As it is brought into place, they will slide up the wall to match the other one. Take a measurement and set it up to 6 feet on center. We have put our raker up 6 foot on center. Because we will assemble a wooden raker on either side and want our wooden rakers to be no more than 8 feet apart. Here are the components for the lateral brace. A B57, which is a brace and two clamp and clevises. Attach the clamps and clevises on both ends of the B57 and extend the brace out so the center of the clamps and clevises are at 72 inches or 6 feet. That means when they attach the lateral bracing to the raker assembly, it will fit perfectly. Now take the clamp and clevises and attach it to the non-movable end of the brace. Attach the clamp and clevis to the movable end of the brace. Because our struts are 6 feet apart, we measure so the center of the braces are 72 inches or 6 feet. Extending that out, attach it to the raker system. Notice here on the left, the non-movable side is always attached first and locked into place. The middle is put in first to stiffen everything up. Slide the other end up, making sure it is level and parallel to the ground. Hand tighten the butterfly screw to hold it in place. The center lateral brace, one of three lateral braces, has firmed up the entire assembly. It will keep it together while placing the others. Now insert the second of the lateral braces. This brace goes on the bottom, approximately a foot from ground. Notice again the non-movable side goes in first and is going on the threads. It is permissible to clamp on the threads or onto the tube. It will not damage the threads. We now do the same thing on the opposite side, the movable side of the brace. Clamp the jaws around the raker, slide it down into place, close it over and hand tighten up the butterfly screw, making sure it is level. Now assemble the diagonal brace, which is longer than the lateral brace. The lateral brace was a B57 by itself. The diagonal brace is going to be a B57 with 235 extension. Notice the matched yellow tape to yellow tape to make sure the extension went on the correct end of the brace. Attach the clamp and clevis on the non-movable end. Move up and attach the clamp and clevis to the movable end. Then move the device in and install the first diagonal brace onto the raker system. Take the adjustable diagonal brace that was assembled and attach that to the bottom of the rake first. Notice they always attach the non-movable or non-adjustable end first. Take the adjustable end and slide it up, turning it out to adjust it so the clamps and clevises are tight together, turning the butterfly brace. Next, attach the top lateral brace. Take the clamp and clevis and at the top of the strut there is a shoulder. Slide the brace up, again we're attaching the non-movable end first. 
On the left-hand side, notice it is attached even with the shoulder of the actual strut. Take the adjustable end and slide it up, opening the jaws to get it to fit over the strut they're going to, up to the strut shoulder, the top shoulder of the clamp and clevis. Match it to the shoulder of the strut and hand tighten. Once complete, we are now ready for the next diagonal brace. Bring in the last brace to the system, which is the second diagonal. Again, attach at the top the non-movable end, non-adjustable end first. Bring the clamps and clevises up to the top right as tight as possible. Once tight, attach the clamp and clevis to the bottom. Here's the completed Paratec Absolute Raker. There are three lateral braces and two diagonal braces, which make the K-brace.